Well, it is Monday in uh, the middle of December, and we are working on one of the worst wells that we have had in probably near a decade. So we came out here Friday, we thought it was going to be an easy day. We're in a neighborhood that we've had dozens of, dozens of easy shallow wells, and we ran into a formation that the only way I could describe it is over the years, you know, thousands, millions of years, there used to be a riverbed down in the ground, um, probably about 30, between 30 and 50 feet. We found nothing but river stone, the round river rock. Um, and the problem with that is it's almost like sand. As you drill through it, it just keeps funneling in more and more and more and more. And you could, you could drill 30 to 40 foot and then pull out and then you'd be back at 30 foot and you'd have to drill to 40 foot again. We didn't hit granite until about 87 foot and we ended up setting 96 foot. Um, and it took us all day long. All day long we can, you know, in a full day we normally can drill 350 to 400 feet and we got 100 feet that day and we ended up running out of water and i wanted to I, I couldn't film any of it because it was so bad i could not turn the camera on i couldn't leave the machine um because we would lose circulation and if any if any driller a lot of drillers will watch this if you understand what losing circulation is on an air machine you understand how dangerous and how scary it is because if you're not getting air coming out of the hole then the air is going somewhere now when you inject 900 or 1000 cfm down in the ground upwards of 250 300 psi and you don't get that air coming out of the top of the hole then all the air is building up down in the ground and that's when you can create a bubble underneath the machine down deep and it can lift the ground or it all comes blowing out of the hole violently when that air enough builds enough pressure and then the only outward spot is the hole that you drilled then it comes ripping up out of the ground and that's what we had happen multiple times the other day got it we, we got i think instead of getting it 90 we got 88 foot in originally and then we had to we had to blow in another nine foot which you've seen me do that on other videos we we just we don't stick the drill bit on we just run a drill rod down the hole with the check valve on the bottom and we basically blow in the casing and let the casing fall and what you're doing you're blowing in the mud and then once you run the drill rod down to where the casing stopped whether it be grit or sand or whatever whatever the situation is um you're just blowing all the stuff away from the bottom of the casing to where the casing can fall and then once you've reached the bottom of your original hole the casing seals off and you're good to go well, the problem with this was we have six inch casing and we have a metal piece on the bottom and the metal piece takes all the abuse from all the rock that we were dealing with. Well, I'll show you a little bit right here. So these were the size stones that were down in the ground that we were trying to get to come up through the casing and there was just no way. So let's just take two. These are just two. Okay. This is the size of our casing, and then this is the size of our drill rod. If you take this, try to show you, that's how much space that we had. This rock had to come up through that casing, and we actually got this one. So imagine the ones that are down there that, that wouldn't come up through the casing. So you got this one, and then you got this one here, and this one almost, almost won't come up through. So we're using air power to force this big rock up through this. Look, I got it, and I got it stuck. And we're using that to send these rocks up through the casing from 100 feet deep. And these are just the ones that came up. There's, there's, you know, hundreds of them that are down there. And we got shovelfuls of stuff like that. And then it looks like this right here. So these are the river stones that we ran into down there between the 30 and the 50 foot mark 
it's just regular old river rock and then you know above it and below it is nothing but sand just like a regular riverbed that you see flowing nowadays it brings in all the fine sediment and all the sand and that's what you see out here well at first we went through about 30 foot of dirt and then we started running into the rock and we thought that we were going to run into granite because all these wells up here they have 50 foot of casing and everything you know is good and then you just move over here a little bit and we ran into this nightmare of a hole well i think we tried blowing in casing for about five hours and it just it was fighting us every step of the way so we learned from trying to use the check valve that the check valve we actually bent the check valve and i mean yeah i mean you come over here and look it's so cold and windy out so this is the type of material that we were drilling in and, and these are just shovelfuls that we had pulled away from the drill it's like the worst stuff to deal with especially when you're using plastic casing and around two o'clock me and dad we had talked about um just saying screw it and pull out all the casing and come back monday morning with steel because we have steel sitting on the lot if we need it but we don't estimate that in our quote to the customer so then we have to now print up a brand new contract to give it to the customer with the price for steel casing on it and um I told him, I go, if the check valve isn't going to work because it's too big, the rocks are too big, why don't we send the six inch hammer down the hole and why don't we let the hammer pulverize the rock that's below it and as long as we don't feed the six inch hammer too fast, we give it time to chew up the rock that's down there, you know, preventing the casing from going to the bottom, then if we can bust those rocks up into smaller pieces, then it'll send it up out the hole. That's exactly what we did now you typically don't want to do that because if your case if your hammer and your bit go below the casing and rock falls in on top of it you can't get your hammer back out because now the casing is coming up with it and you can't pull out 90 feet of casing because in your stuff's down there so you'd end up having to break all your casing just to get your hammer back out and that's a little that's a little sketchy but that was the only other alternative that we had to do. We wouldn't recommend it in any other scenario besides this situation here. Um, but right now, <laughs> I think uh, I worked it for about an hour and I lost circulation about three or four times and it just made me nervous. Every time I would lose circulation, the and what I mean by that is as you're injecting air and water into the well, you're supposed to get stuff coming up out of the casing and coming away from the machine well then like magic it just stops all the air stops all the water stops and me as a driller i have to stop going down i have to stop drilling i have to lift up to try to gain circulation again and it's so nerve-wracking because i know what's going on down there i'm sending all that high pressured air and it's going out in the ground and it's going out here and it's going to find the path of least resistance typically it builds up enough pressure and it blows out of the out of the skirt and then it explodes everywhere and i had that happen probably half a dozen times yesterday and uh, or friday and um it's just it's just dangerous and sketchy and, and and it makes your your nerves shot and everything about it that's just terrible but i think it was around 3 30 and you know typically we get casing set by 11 o'clock and it was 3.30 and I was done with it. I let dad come up and he just kept feeding the hammer down, feeding the hammer down and he got to 96 foot and he stopped because that was where we were supposed to have the casing set to is 96 foot. So we just sat there and let the six inch hammer, it had chewed everything up, we let it blow and we stopped our rotation and then we slowly watched the casing fall and it slowly fell to the bottom and then the water became clear again. And then all we had to do, we had to just get a, like a five or a six foot piece of casing off the truck because like if you look down in the ground, there was our casing, but it was like four feet down below the surface. So we just had to get a coupling, glue it up, slip it down there, we glued it on, and then now we have our casing above the surface again. 
but yeah it was an absolute nightmare i'm sorry i don't have any footage to show you but when things happen like that there's it's not worth the sake of a video i don't know you as if you would really want to see it but me as a driller and dad as a driller it makes us nervous beyond anything um and it's just no time to film but um what we did we used so much water that we didn't have any water left towards the end of the day for the grout so <clears throat> once it came time to grout like we had an inspector here the entire time while we were doing this and the inspector was blown away because he had never seen such a such a bad situation you know most uh most inspectors don't run into to wells that are a nightmare when they come here to watch grout you know, if a well is a bad situation, we'll call the inspector and tell him not to come. But we already had a schedule, and the inspector was actually bringing us lunch because he's such a nice guy. Well, when he gets here, he sees how bad the situation is, and he just kind of steps back and watches. And then every time he had a question, if we weren't, you know, on the back of the machine or, or whoever wasn't drilling, he would ask the question. But it gave him a really good perspective on just how bad things can go and it, it gave him you know the ability to understand a little bit more of what's going on down there but when it came time to grout the well i think we were we were supposed to do 50 foot of grout and right now i'm going to estimate we probably got like 85 foot of grout in this well um but you know just, just it'll help the situation but because of all the sand and all the mud and everything we created such a large like diamond shaped or hourglass shaped cavity down in the well it's not a smooth cylinder it's it's like a big big you know hourglass down there we have to fill all that up with grout and um i put i think i put six batches in it on friday and here we got one two three four five six seven we got seven more here today so i had told justin um, I estimated with what I thought I figured it would take 14 so what it looks like it took 13 so I'm not far off so oh look they finally got the casing come up to the top or they got the grout to come up to the top which looks great and what we're gonna do today because we're only at like hundred and twenty foot right now we're gonna go back in with a smaller bit so the bit we have on now is brand new it's six six and a quarter inch or six and an eighth inch we're gonna go back that's like a 5.85 bit it's been ran quite a few times and it's resharpened but it's smaller so if we if we run into more of that stuff down below the casing you know because we don't know what we're gonna find we, we just you know we're we're well drillers we are not in the you know place to know what mother nature has down in store for us you know below the ground we just have to make do with what what's down there and and roll with the punches as we go <laughs> but um we're gonna send that bit down and hopefully hopefully what our thoughts are uh, based on everybody else's wells around here we're gonna find water pretty shallow and the risk of doing that is uh ripping the casing loose in the ground the seat the seal way down deep at 96 foot where it goes into the bedrock we don't want um we don't want that to rip loose so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna cut it off here and once we find water i'll catch back up with you and i'll let you know how the end of the day goes
just hit water. Our expectation was we would hit water by 165 foot. Right now it looks like we're 145 foot. truck eating lunch and doing a little Christmas shopping online and I heard the machine bog down so I knew we hit water now um, what I had talked about dad's he's cleaning up what I had talked about previously to this was that if we hit large volumes of water we were gonna stop drilling and that's exactly what we're gonna do he's been up and down about six times trying to clean the void out and it just keeps more stuff coming in. I mean, you all saw those stones in my hand. Those were big rock. Um, <clears throat> the well makes over 10 gallons a minute right now. This is only for a garage, so there's no need to drill any deeper. Um, I think around 100, 510 foot, we already had like two, three gallons a minute. That, that well was full of water this morning, which I was kind of surprised about that. But um, we're going to stop here. The reason why we do not want to rip the casing seal out at the bottom where the where the casing meets the bedrock you've got like a nine or a ten foot socket right there um, maybe more than that but we were back and forth on the machine all day because it was such a nightmare so we just we don't want to continue to drill any more and hit even more water and then it it takes that the water comes into the well and it can act and it comes up with such force it can catch the lip of the casing and wash it out and then all the liquid grout that we have in the well then pours beside the casing and dumps into the well that's my biggest issue with well grout because it's still like a liquidy clay um, substance and it can wash beside the casing all the way down that's why these rules and these regulations they don't understand the best thing for a well to grout it in is its own chips chips do far better than the grout does um, but I understand some you know some uh, engineer somewhere says that this is better in our area it's better to use chips in other areas where they may have high sand content or nothing but shell clay or whatever the case may be it may be different there but I am only familiar with my area not any other region so that's just you know what we do um, but it's best to allow the chips to go down around the base of the casing and then stop drilling and then you can put grout above it. That's what we like to do because it's less likelihood of the chips washing in and what happens if the chips do wash away then the larger chips go down and plug up that spot that washed away. But this job was totally different compared to a typical granite well. We didn't run into granite until like 80 six foot 87 foot something like that but all right he's done washing it up i gotta finish doing what i'm doing here i just finished my paperwork and we're gonna go trip out the hole all right it's been about 30 minutes we got everything pulled out rigs all laid over he's pulling pulling forward now we had a lot of rain over the weekend so we don't want it to get stuck but yeah look at the size of rocks that were coming out of that aquifer i mean they're huge i'm gonna say that's probably two inch by inch and a half that's like railroad stone almost really big really big stuff that's about an inch there's another one so you can tell on rocks like this how it's got that green tint to it so that's where the water was sitting water was sitting right there it's cha it changes the color of the granite to a green color but yeah good good got all of our Oh yeah, see, he's he got soft. All right, let me help him back up. Oh boy, 
Ah, uh, yeah, we got a lot of rain over the weekend. Especially in here. He had the wheels turned and it was going straight. He didn't even know it. Uh, well, we'll fix this when we come back with the excavator. That's why it's so important to have a dry lot. People don't realize how heavy the machine weighs. Well, we're all done with the job. We're headed back to the shop now to load everything up. So we're gonna end it here. And uh, yeah, that was a that was a tough well. It was great that it was um, it was so shallow. It'll help the customer because we pump so much bentonite, so much grout. It just makes the bill go up. But um, <clears throat> yeah, we we burned enough diesel fuel for like a 450 foot well. So we lost on that end of the deal. But no biggie. Um, I'm actually headed right now. They're gonna go back and load the truck up. I gotta go to the uh, tire shop and pick up a tire because last week I hit a brick and I popped the sidewall of a $450 front tire. Just, ah, oh, made me so mad. But it's just, is what it is. But hope y'all enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Yeah, I know it's a little bit different. This video is a little bit different, but I just didn't film it. I wasn't thinking it was going to be that bad. Even if it was, I probably wouldn't have turned the camera on. There's just no time to film. Um, you know, you, you as the viewer don't understand my number one goal is to keep the rig upright and keep the guy safe. And then my second goal is to give the customer a quality product, a quality well. And then my third goal is to try to make good content for y'all. So you come in third, everything else comes before that. But I reckon I'll see y'all on the next one. Have a good one.